Hi everyone and welcome to The Buff Life. I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for watching my uh, vlog here. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about a couple of things. I'm going to be asking two questions. The first question is, can you give too much of yourself? And the second question is, what are your limits and boundaries that you set when you're entering a relationship or do you set any? So I'm talking about it because I recently had a conversation with a, a friend of mine who over the years I've watched them go through so many things and, and aspects to the relationship that they were in with someone or that is currently they're in with someone where they just seem to just take so much, you know, and she, this person, she's, she's a really great person. She has a good personality. I've known her for a long time. And she gets, no matter what you, you know, you can talk to her about certain things, but you can only tell people so much that they're not going to always hear you and listen to you. So um, she's gotten herself into a relationship with someone who is not really all that nice to her. And it's really not the person for her. And so it inspired me to ask these questions today. So I'm going to be using a little bit uh, of what she said to me, but I'm not a lot, just maybe a little bit. Um, but just to give you the breakdown, um, you know, like I said, she's been dealing with so much uh, for over four years. Um, and I don't see that she has any limits or any boundaries because when when things happen, she just kind of like says, OK, I'm going to forgive that person for it. But then they turn around and do the same thing to her. So today asking the first question is, can you give too much of yourself? I believe that you absolutely can. I think a lot of us do. Unfortunately, many of us get into these relationships with people who we feel like we can make them better or fix them. That's not true. That's not the truth. And let me tell you why it's not ever going to happen that way for you. Because first of all, there's nothing wrong with that person. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that person. At least this is what I feel. I feel like that person is perfect just the way that they, they are, but just not for you or not for me. For instance, if you have someone who constantly just gets you to the point where you feel like you need to walk away or yell and scream and argue. Those are, those are character flaws that these people have that possibly is telling you that that's not the person for you. There are so pe many people in this world who are meant to come into your life for just a moment in time, but that's it. And I think a lot of us have a problem realizing when that is or who that is. So um, I'm going to use myself, for instance, and this is something that I became, and I didn't always know this or have this feeling, but when I was younger, I would deal with a lot from people. But the one thing I can gladly say about myself is I never let them take me to a level of anger where I had to lash out or curse them out. I was never that kind of person. I seen it too much when I was growing up, you know? And so when I became, you know, when I got to like the age of 22, 23, um, when I would deal with people, I would I literally would let them do a lot of things and, and get away with things that should not just be taken lightly that I that I forgave them for only to find out that they're just not who they say they are. And it would take me, you know, a long time to just finally say that's it. But now, um, as I've gotten older, I know exactly what I want, what I'm willing to accept, what I'm not. And now I don't know if you, but when I get involved with someone that's uh, wanting to be like in my my boyfriend and possibly lead on to marriage, the first thing I do is I sit down and have a talk with them. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to tell you the things I expect out of you and the things you, you can tell me the things you expect out of me. That way we don't let each other down uh, from the, you know, everything, because everything is always roses when you, you know, for the first month, maybe two months. And then that's when things start to get bad. And people, I see so many people on TV saying they fell in love with somebody in a week. And I said to myself, I laugh at it because I was like, that used to be me thinking I was in love, but not a week. I would always, it would probably be a month or two for me. But now as I get older, uh, I realize, you know, the things that I was just enamored with and not realistic things. So for instance, um, I'm going to use myself. Um, when I go into a relationship, I want to have reciprocity in that relationship. I don't want to be the only person giving of myself. And so mo in most cases, uh, people that give a lot in relationships, I'm, most of them don't get back what they give. And they 
And so they're always lonely. Even in a relationship, they're lonely or they feel like they, maybe they need to do more because that's why the person's not showing them reciprocity. When the, It just simply may be that that person is una- un- unavailable emotionally to give you that. Maybe that person's not really as into you as you are into them. So when I do find somebody that I'm going to be in a relationship, like I said, I sit down and I have a talk with them and we talk about the things that we expect and need in our relationships in order to make them better. So I don't know how you guys do it, but when I have that talk in my head, I have what I call a mental chart of availability and emotion and hurt. And basically what it is, is I have on my chart that I'm going to be available to them emotionally. I make sure I'm like, okay, and I gauge myself on what I'm giving and what I'm receiving and emotionally what I'm sharing. But the biggest chart that I have is the chart where I call it, that's the it chart. And what I say by that is, it's a chart that basically tells me when I have had enough, okay? So I'll give you my, the way I do it. It's a mental chart. It's something I've never written down, but I have three levels. The first level is, uh, the level is called unintentional hurt and disrespect. The next level is intentional hurt and disrespect. And then the third level is basically, hell no, that's it, I'm done, okay? And for each level, you have to get three check marks in those in order to graduate you to the next level. So for instance, I'll give you an idea of what I mean by that. So say in the beginning of the relationship, I had a conversation with you and we talked about how I like a gentleman. I like a man that's going to open doors for me, pull my chairs out, be kind, make sure I'm safely in the car, make sure, call me and make sure I made it home safely. Those types, just caring things. You know, when we walk in down the street, he walks on the outside, I walk on the inside. You know, just those just small things sometimes believe it or not some people can't do it they just don't feel like they should do it they feel like you're able body why can't you open your own doors but see that's the person that i don't want to be with so you want to get somebody that has your thought process so if i have that talk with you and in the talk you tell me oh yeah i'm this kind of person i'm definitely a gentleman and i can do this and that and you're like okay good because that's what i'm that's what i'm available for that's what i want to be with someone who's caring and, and a gentleman and really really is concerned with your well-being and so let's say we get a month or two down the road and uh we're going somewhere constantly and uh for the first time we you know we go out he he doesn't do it. And you, I don't say anything to him the first time. So I go like, another, I, wait, I wait another time and I'm like, it's the second time. Then I'll just stand outside the car and then look over me like, oh, and then get out the car. Like literally he's already in the car and comes out and comes around, open the door and lets me in. So I, when I get in the car with him, I say, so remember you told me that you, you are a gentleman and you do those things. He said, I was just thinking about something else. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I am still gonna put that in my category when you consistently do it for three to four times. So once you get to that fourth time of decide, doing the same thing, even though we've had that discussion, I'm gonna talk to you, but I'm gonna put a check in that unintentional hurt and disrespect. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. So let's say I have another talk with you, and you say you're gonna do it, and then you know we you start falling into that the role that you're going to do, you're going to start doing it and you start doing it, you know, but then two or three times into it, you're just like, well, why I have to open the door for you? Why can't you just open your own door? Why have to pull the chair out for you? See, so that check mark that's there now, you get another one right next to it. At this time, I might actually move you up to the second category because now after I talk to you and you know, that's how I feel. And then you want to, you intentionally say that I'm not going to do it. Why do I have to do it? Then that tells me you were lying from the beginning. So now you might get a strike in the intentional hurt and disrespect because it's already something that I discussed with you and said, I don't want anyone who cannot be a gentleman. So it's little things like that because I want you to ask yourself the bigger question here. That may seem like a small thing to you, but small things lead up to big things. So that's already, you're letting me down from my expectations of what you said you could do. And let's, let's say this, if you buy a car and you tell the people that you're going to make a car payment every month on time, when you don't make it, you've now let the lender down and now there are repercussions for it. So the same thing applies in life. When you let people down, there are repercussions for the things you do. And you have to be strong in your understanding and your belief. 
So I'm very strong at it now, but I wasn't when I was younger. So I'm going to give you an idea of what took me to a point where I had to just give, put somebody in a third level category. So I was living in California and I was involved in a relationship. It was about two years in. And no, it wasn't even two years. Maybe it was a year and a half in. And um, I had talked to him about a place I had never been to. It wasn't some place that was expensive or anything like that. And it was really close by where I live, but I'd just never been there because I never wanted to go there alone. It was like an amusement park type of thing. And so I told him, I said, I've always wanted to go there, you know, but I just never really want to go by myself, you know. And he turned around and he looked at me and he said, oh, really? He said, you know what? I'm going to take you there. Well, I'll take you there and we'll have a good time. And I'm like, wow, really? Thank you. That'd be nice. So about a month or so passed. And then one day he came to my house and he got on my laptop and uh, he was on there. And I saw he was on the SeaWorld website. So I was like, oh, he must finally buy the tickets. It was SeaWorld. And the SeaWorld tickets to me are not expensive compared to other places that you can go to, but I had never been to SeaWorld. So I was like, okay, great. He's going to buy tickets to SeaWorld for us. And so I see him going there. I see him making a purchase and I'm in the kitchen at this point and I'm just like, I'm cooking. And so I didn't watch everything he did, but as I was coming out of the kitchen, I could see that he was using the printer to print off his confirmation pages. And I was like, oh, wow, we're going to go to SeaWorld. So I finished dinner up and uh, we sat down to eat dinner. We had dinner and then we, after dinner, we were sitting on the couch and I was sitting there and I was just, you know, comfortable. And, he, you know, he said, oh, I went online and purchased tickets, uh, season passes for me and my daughter. He said, when are you going to buy your ticket? And in my mind, this is what's going on. Oh, hell no. That was what was going on in my mind. Because this man had sat there and ha watched me have this long discussion with him about how much I wanted to go there so badly. Then not only did he listen to me, but he acknowledged and said that he was going to take me there. So I think most of us assume when you're in a relationship with a man and he says he's going to take you through this place and you will have a good time, that means he's going to buy the tickets for us to go there. Now, mind you, at the time, I knew the prices of the tickets were like $69. So when he says to me, uh, yeah, I bought tickets for me and my daughter uh, around season passes for me and my daughter, which is more than $69. Uh, season passes for me and my daughter. When are you going to purchase your ticket? And I looked at him and I, and I just literally said, are you serious right now? He's like, what? I said, so you and your daughter have been to SeaWorld, you told me, probably 10 or 20 times together. But I've never been there. And what was your concept of when you told me that you were going to take me there? I said, if you meant that you were going to drive me there when I know it's like 10 minutes from my house and I have my own car, then I don't need you to do that. I don't need you to go with me at this point, because at this point I'm paying for everything. I thought you were doing a nice gesture. And he said, oh, my God, I was going to buy you a ticket. but I just didn't have enough to get you a ticket. I told him, I, I looked at him dead in his face and I said, get the hell out of my house right now and don't come back. I said, because I'm not worth the $69 ticket, but you can buy season passes for you and your daughter. Mind you, if you've been there 10 or 20 times, why is it that you couldn't make a small sacrifice and just buy tickets? If you want your daughter to go, that's fine. But why couldn't you just buy tickets for all three? They would have been cheaper than two season passes. And he was like, oh, well, you know, I know it's going to go. I was like, okay, all right. I told him, like I said, I told him to get out of my house. He went out of my house and he actually was crying when he left. And I didn't even say anything nasty to him. But he knew when I looked him dead in his eyes and I stared hard, I said, get out the hell out of my house. He knew he was in the hot water. And he instantly went to the level of three. But, oh, hell, I can't do this no more. So now he only needs two more. Then after that happened, I, I didn't talk to him for a couple of, about a week or so. And, uh, you know, then he started you know, sending me a mess. Oh, he's sorry and all that. And I, I didn't even really accept that apology, to be honest with you. I just like, whatever, because I had already marked it in my third level that I wasn't going to I could I wasn't going to take any more of that. And that was not to me. That wasn't unintentional. That was it was an intentional hurt. That was just downright uh, smack in your face type of hurt. So after that, like. One day, I'm, it's like the weekend, and I'm sitting at home. It was like early in the morning, like, oh, well, not early. It's probably 11 o'clock. And um, he calls me on the phone. I'm like, hey, he's like, hey, how you doing? I was like, I'm fine. He said, oh, oh yeah, me and Crystal over here at SeaWorld. 
Okay. Why are you calling to tell me you guys are at SeaWorld? Are you calling to rub this in my face? Oh, no, it's, it's not, it should, you shouldn't be here. It is having so much fun. I said, click, hung up the phone. He tried calling me back, didn't answer. Then he's sending me text messages with pictures in it of him and his daughter having so much fun at SeaWorld. Went right to the number two, intentional hurt and disrespect. I put it right there. So now he's got strikes in all these categories. And so what, that is how my system works. Basically, I have my limits. When you get three strikes in that, uh, the very third level, that's it. I turn into somebody different. And I'm not an arguer. I'm, I, don't, I don't even curse at a person when I'm angry. I turn into what I call Anne, which is my middle name. Anne comes out. And Anne will look you in your face, laugh, and, and have a good time, joke with you and everything. And the moment she leaves out that door, you will never see her again. She will not take another phone call. She might up and move to another state on you. That is just who she is, which is a part of me. So unfortunately, I don't know if it's, it's a blessing or a curse because I get to these situations when I'm like that, that I don't even feel hurt anymore. Because in my mind, I have reached my limit. And I look at that situation, I make the exact decision that I'm supposed to, and I leave the relationship. And I never look back. I don't ever get on the phone and talk to them again or get, give them a long speech about why we're not. I say nothing at all because I feel like your actions have spoken loud enough throughout the relationship. So therefore, you don't need me to say anything else to you. So I will block my block them from calling me. I will change my number. I will move on them. So they don't even have an idea of where I'm at or what's going on. Then you know what? That's just their loss because these are things that in my eyes was just things that shouldn't have happened and especially when you're in a relationship with someone and you you know you treat them really good you know you don't you don't do hurtful things to them and they do something like that to you to me it's like they don't look at you as being someone who's deserving of having respect and treating you right so um when and that's the thing that i pose today what is your limit what do you set a mental chart do you actually write it down what do you do because i think if you don't set limits and boundaries in your relationship before you get headstrong into the relationship, then what happens is you don't, you just take so much abuse and so much pain and so much hurt from that person because you never set a boundary or limit with them. You never decided before it went on into four or five years that you had limits on certain things of what you were going to take and not because why do you want to sit there and waste your life for years on a person even if you take a month or two months and just make a decision on what it is you really need then that should be respected and you should implement it because i see so many people out here men and women who don't have boundaries they set in their relationships um when uh, someone uh one of my friends told me one time she said oh, i got some man i went over there and i threw a brick through his uh, the window of his car and I said, are you serious right now? And she said, yeah. I said, so you're willing to put yourself at risk to what? Show your anger where you can possibly go to jail, probably lose your job. You may even lose your apartment because if you don't have an income, you can't pay rent. You can't eat. And I said, do you really feel like all that is worth messing your life up over somebody who doesn't care about you enough to not do those things? So, I mean, I see it all, all the time, I'm, even when I'm watching TV, and if I watch a certain, certain shows, it, it just really gets down to, like, my inner soul when I see men on there with a woman that has cheated on them multiple times, or he came home and found them in the bed together, and he consistently forgives her, and, or she hits him, and he's abused, or this, vice versa, the woman, you know, her husband's out there cheating, or her boyfriend's out there cheating, he lies to her face, brings her home diseases that he's gotten from other women and she's just accepting of that. And I said, this poor woman, does she, does she even know what her limits and boundaries are? And if you have no limits or boundaries, what if you get to the point where you get violent and you do something you shouldn't do and it takes you and locks you up in jail because you go and assault somebody, you get with the intent to kill, you are definitely going to go jail. No, it's ands or buts about it. I mean, this is something that you really need to think about when you get in relationships with people, asking them, what are the, you know, what is it that you're, you're expecting of me? And this is what I'm expecting of you. Set those boundaries and levels 
and stick to them. Because if you don't stick to them, what's going to happen is that person's going to feel like they can keep pushing you on and on. And you will take it because you're out of the name of love. But you have to be good to yourself first before you can be good to anyone else. That's just my opinion. So with that being said, what about you? Do you set limits? Do you have boundaries? And how do you keep track of those things? When is it enough? Okay. And are you capable of giving too much? Do do we in general, I think women in general do give a lot uh, because we're nurturers, most of us. And so we always, I've heard friends say, uh, like we can go out somewhere and see someone that they really like and get to know them. And then, you you know, you're like talking to your friend. She's like, I really like him. And you can be that friend going, but you know what? He got a, he has a very foul mouth and every other word, other word out of his mouth is a curse word. And, you know, he, oh, he went to jail. He just got out. And then he, he has like a repetitive process of going to jail. And you're, you're just like, okay. So women think, okay, uh, well, you know what? I can make, I can, I can fix that. I mean, you know, I'll show him how to be bright. Sometimes you just can't. Like I said, sometimes that person is just not the right person for you because they're perfect for someone else. There is some person out there, some woman that wants a cheating, lying, deceptive man because they in turn might also be that way. There are some women out there who feel like, you know, they feel bad when they give up because they feel like they're letting that man down. And it's so amazing throughout history, women have been the backbone of men and they don't recognize us for that. We get treated like, oh, well, where you come from, there's 20 more. There might be 20 more women, but I invested in you. I was your backbone. I had your back no matter what. These women, you know, just get disrespected. And it's just very sad when I see that because I feel like, you know, when are they going to have our backs? And then you have the other side of the, of the, uh, of the thought process where there are men who are down for their women. It's very rare that I see it, but uh, I don't ever, the one thing I'll tell you, this is funny. I never really see a lot of women who go to prison and their men are outside waiting for them or coming to visit them in prison. It's like a rare thing. I, I watch a lot of um, like TV about cop shows, history, um, just a lot of stuff like that. And whenever I watch these shows and it's talking about prison, it'll be at the women's prison. And you will never, ever see a man coming to visit the women. It'll be like the women's mother bringing their children to come visit them or their, their mother or their sister coming or their brother coming. But you don't see their, you know, mate coming to visit them because that person's like, hey, I'm out here. I got other women I can deal with. And it's just really, it's just really a very um, unsettling thing when I think about that. So it's like, why do we ride so hard for our men when they don't ride hard for us? I don't know. So um, with all that, I hope you comment below. Don't forget to click subscribe um, because I'm going to be putting out other videos um, in different situations, but mainly this one is the one that I wanted to put out because I had got a call from my friend. So with that being said, ask yourself these questions. Do I set limits and boundaries when I enter a relationship? And what are those boundaries and how am I enforcing those boundaries and limits? Secondly, am I giving too much of myself to this person and not getting reciprocity? Those are things I want you to think about. Thanks again for tuning in to The Buff Life. Please make sure you comment below, click subscribe. Hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.